there are tons of stories about hacked Pokemon games. Some of them are really quite neat, such as the version where you get a ghost for a starter. Some are ridiculous, silly stories about individuals dying after playing the game, or the game taking them. God, don't these writers know less is more in these stories? Well, I digress. I grew interested in these hacked games that are apparently in any thrift store, on eBay, or handed out by homeless people at a random passerby. I didn't have the pleasure of meeting these creepy people. I merely found this particular cartridge in a trash bin when the garbage truck backed into my neighbor's dumpster. I noticed the game and asked the trash man if I could take it. He didn't seem to mind. It was thrown away after all. I, of course, checked with my neighbor to confirm that they actually didn't want it. Though they seemed perplexed, as if they'd never seen it before. Their son made a grab for it. The little boy saw the Charizard on the cover crying out, Pokemon! I want mommy! But his mother told him no, seeing as I found it. He didn't even have a Game Boy anyway. He just liked Pokemon. Thinking nothing more, I simply went home, looking at the cartridge sticker on the way. It was just a plain old red version. The sticker was torn slightly across the Charizard's neck, but that was expected for an old game. I had blue version as a kid, so I was a bit eager to see the albeit minimal differences that the red version had. I was rather disappointed by what I saw when the title screen showed up. Pokemon Strangled Red Version. Well, damn it, it was a hack. Hacks were neat and all, but they had zero monetary value. The originals were quite valuable by now. And I wanted to play Red anyway, not this crap. Oh well, it was free, so I might as well try it. The name was odd, however. Strangled Red. That didn't make any sense. The more I thought about this, though, the more interesting it became. My initial disappointment turned into curiosity. I wanted to see what this creator had made, and I was going to note everything I saw. The first oddity I noticed was that the start screen had a Charizard next to a trainer instead of a Charmander. Also, the Pokemon never cycled through like the original versions did. It just stayed Charizard, even after a few minutes of waiting. Shrugging, I had start noticing a Charizard cry as I did. I saw there was a continue option, so I figured I'd do what everyone did with used games and see what the previous owner had done. No. I blinked in surprise. No? What do you mean no? The game wouldn't let me continue no matter what. Though on the fourth attempt I heard the Charizard cry, quiet and barely audible, but there. Shrugging it off, I decided to just hit a new game. The screen cut to black for a while. No Professor Oak. No starting theme, just nothing at all. Eventually the screen came back showing a bedroom, two beds, and two TVs. There was also a computer in the corner. My trainer sprite was the usual one, consistent to the original red version. I was curious why it didn't ask my name yet. Though that was answered at the opening pause menu, noticing my trainer was named Steven. No, this isn't my real name or some stupid crap like that. This game isn't self-aware or haunted. At least that I know of. It just had a name chosen already. Curious, I saw the starter amount of money. No badges. He didn't look like Red, though. His hair was longer, almost reaching halfway down his back. Red's usual smile was replaced with a confident smirk. Honestly, I found the sprite much cooler than Red. Next, I checked his Pokemon. A single Charmander, level 5, named Mickey. Nothing was odd about it, or I should say, her. She had beginning Charmander stats, only knew scratch and tail with basic stuff, and the game seemed relatively normal. Returning to the game, I walked about the room, noticing Steven's long hair was present from the back of my trainer sprite. I didn't recognize the house, but I descended the stairs to see more. Downstairs was another trainer who spoke to me the instant I came down. Mike said, Ready yet? Steven said, yeah. I assumed this Mike was my rival, predecided for me, a replacement of Blue most likely. Though I thought back to my bedroom having two beds, realizing that they weren't just rivals, they were brothers. They talked back and forth, basic Pokemon dialogue, to become a Pokemon master, catch them all, you know, stuff like that. Before having a little argument over which is better, Charmander or Squirtle, which of course led to the introduction battle. Like the one versus Blue in the lab, 
Simple enough, scratch, tackle, scratch, tackle, scratch, tackle, until you won purely of having the first turn. I took note of how much better Steven's sprite looked. A different pose, his hair was looking like it was blowing in the wind, a brief minor upgrade, but still nicer. I left the house after some more banter with my brother, stepping out a Pallet Town theme. Going to the east, I found Pallet Town. The house was simply on the outskirts of the west. I noted there was no mysterious grassy field like the normal Pallet Town. I decided to check on Brett's home. His mother was inside when I talked to her. She commented on how handsome Steven looked, hoping her son would look up to him as a role model and become a trainer himself next year. Which of course led me to realize that this game took place a year before the original Pokemon. Red was even upstairs playing the SNES in his room commenting, I'm going to be the best too and it's my turn. I was starting to like this hack. It was interesting. A completely new adventure. A different character. Hell, Steven even seemed to have a history of people in his town. A reputation, a personality beyond a silent protagonist. The people in the town liked him as a person, making conversation, not just spouting tutorial crap. Even Blue's sister had new dialogue. They seemed to be in a relationship too, as the dialogue ended with a kiss and a heart over her head. Professor Oak simply wished me well, giving me a Pokedex to aid my adventure. He wasn't giving it to me to be the reason behind the adventure like every other Pokemon game out there. He gave it to me out of kindness, something to help me on the way, a gift. I was liking this more and more each second. The game seemed to have an actual story now. I was a somebody, not just a cookie cutter protagonist anyone could be. Not some blank sheet that could be replaced without notice. The story was different, though the actual gameplay remained unchanged. I went to the north like I was supposed to, went from town to town, collected badges, received praise from the leaders. Steven's fame even seemed to spread, as some of the NPCs would talk to him like they knew him. I used Mickey for every battle, and she was growing surprisingly fast. She handled Brock with ease, even pounded Misty with no trouble at all. She also did more damage than regular Charmander. She was vertible and a powerhouse. She even became a Charizard at the mere level of 25. Not bad at all, I must say. Things started to get weird, though, as soon as I reached Lavender Town. I know, I know, Lavender Town is the focus behind every creepy story and the like. But it was the only place that was noticeably different. There was no Team Rocket invasion, which I found odd. Though I did remember this was a year in the past, so the invasion wouldn't occur until Red's time. I tried to enter the Pokemon Tower, aiming to get a Ghastly, but that's when it got odd. Steven said, I have no reason to be here. Steven wouldn't go into the Pokemon Tower no matter what I did. This was weird. I mean, hell, there are a million places in Kanto you really have no need to be. Little random houses with nothing but children and PCs, for example. Why was it here that Steven wouldn't enter? With a shrug, I figured I wouldn't need a Ghastly, seeing as Mickey could handle everything, so I simply went on my way, Lavender Town serving no purpose other than a passageway to the Poke Center. The game progressed normally from there. The remaining gyms fell, and eventually I made my way to the Elite Four and defeated them. As with Blue, my brother, Mike, seemed to be there before me, initiating a championship battle, which Mickey swept with ease. The aftermath of the battle was quite pleasant. None of the tension was present between Red and Blue at the end of their match. The brothers congratulated each other with the progress that they made and shook hands. Before the screen went white, no Hall of Fame, nor any credits. When the screen came back, I was at my house again. The two brothers were sitting at the computer, conversing with each other. Steven said, I don't want to. Come on, I just gotta borrow for a second to finish the Pokedex. The entry won't register unless she recognizes me as the master for just a second. But she's my Mickey. I promise I'll give her back. Come on, please. The yes or no box came up. I was a bit perplexed. So I hit no to be cautious. Come on, please. No. Come on, please. I realized this was simply continuing a loop until I hit yes. So I did, just to see what would happen. Alright, this will just take a sec, then we'll both be Pokemasters. Steven said nothing. The screen changed to the animation shown when two people trade Pokemon, which I found a bit weird, seeing as I was solo. But whatever. This was apparently supposed to happen. Mickey went first, 
I watched lazily as she began to travel down the trading tube. Snap! The sudden noise made me jump. The sudden noise resonating in my silent room, loud due to the volume being way up. Looking at my screen, I noticed the game seemed to freeze. Mickey still in mid-trade, but the game wasn't doing anything. With a sigh, I just turned off the game, wondering when my last save was. When I turned the game back on, I stared at it for a moment at the start screen. There was no Charizard next to the trainer. Upon pressing start, I saw the new game option was absent, only leaving continue. This was... strange, to say the least. So I selected it. The game. Starting, without even showing my stats as usual. My jaw dropped when I saw what I was greeted with. One year later. The Lavender Town theme came first, playing its normal way, the screen slowly fading from blackness. Steven was in the Pokemon Tower, which made the music even stranger, seeing as the tower had its own theme. He was standing in front of a tombstone, not saying anything, wondering what was going on. I pressed A. Steven said nothing. Confused, I tried walking, realizing I was indeed control at the moment. I brought up the pause menu and checked my party. Mickey was gone. Not just Mickey, all Pokemon. I had nothing. The Pokedex was absent from the menu. His bag was empty. Honestly, I was concerned now. I checked his trainer card. He had no money. He had no badges. His playtime was 8,795 hours. Which was impossible because I only had 30 logged in before. But that wasn't the strangest part. His picture, the picture of the handsome, confident young trainer was... different. His eyes were blank. His face was slightly down. The smirk was gone, replaced by a lack of any expression at all. That long hair of his before in a perfect perm, was now messy and unkept. I couldn't look at him anymore. Closing the menu, I went to move out of the tower, but with every step I took away from the tombstone, the screen flickered like it did when a Pokemon was poisoned. Uh, gulping, I brought up the trainer card again. His picture was getting worse. Every step I took, he hung his head more and more. His shoulders slumped, he bent over. By the time I had exited the tower, he was on his knees, hands to his face, his hair was draped across him. I had guessed already what was going on, but this clenched it. I began to put some things together in my mind. I had always wondered why there was no champion in the original games besides your rival. Why is it you had to beat your rival when he just waltzed in? No previous champion to challenge. Then it struck me. The answer was right there. The previous champion gave up. His precious Mickey apparently died, and with her, so a part of him. His Pokedex, other Pokemon, his badges, his fame, all of it, he threw it away. And that year, the year that I missed, the year where all those hours came from. I even did the math, 8,765 hours in a year. Add that to the 30 from before, and it matched up. Even so, the game kept going. This should have been the ending. I mean, what else was there to do? I had no Pokedex, no Pokemon, not anything. What was I supposed to be doing? I talked to everyone in the town, but they all said similar things. Are you okay? Still mourning, I see. Everything will be alright. Please, is there anything we can do? Steven never replied to them, and they all simply said the same things over and over. I couldn't put the game down now. This was all so strange. Curious, I headed off into the tall grass, and eventually got into a battle with a Rattata. No Pokemon was sent out, just Steven Sprite. I was wondering how I'd battle. Wild Rattata left you be. The battle ended without anything happening. This was certainly interesting, and it happened with every Pokemon I encountered. Wild Pidgey ignored you. Wild Ponyta wandered off. The music never changed, either. No matter where I went, Lavender Town came from the speakers, following me. Sometimes it slowed down slightly, sometimes not. I searched everywhere, every town, I talked to everybody, wondering just what the hell I needed to do. 
My frustration was mixing with the depressing atmosphere of all of this, making the experience altogether unnerving and uncomfortable. But I couldn't tear myself away. I was starting to get a bit angry though. Nobody was telling me anything besides giving me their condolences and trying to give me items like lemonade or coffee. Stephen just said no. I slapped myself for idiocy, suddenly realizing how the likely answer was right in front of me. Pallet Town, of course. When I went there, though, which took a long time having to walk with no Pokemon to fly with or no bicycle to ride, and Stephen only seemed to move half the movement speed, it wasn't much different. First I tried talking to Professor Oak. These things happen. You were just unlucky. Next I tried Blue Sister. Please, don't leave home again. Red's mom wouldn't even talk to me at all. With nowhere else to go, I walked to the west, finding my house, which I had never entered since leaving Pallet Town. Inside was Mike, but talking to him was useless. I'm so sorry. I pondered for a moment. If this really was the ending, Stephen doomed to do nothing but roam Kanto in misery, haunted by memories, forced to listen to everyone's concerns about him, as a last-ditch effort to do anything. I went to the bedroom and over to his bed. I'm gonna sleep. The screen faded to black for a moment, but then slowly faded back in, the word having a black tint to it. The mic sprite was laying on the other bed. I assumed it meant it was night. I'm gonna do it. Do what? Again, I had no idea. I tried to inspect everything in the room. Nothing happened as soon as I left the house. Another dialogue came up. It can bring her back. It can do anything. What the hell was it? Something that could do anything? I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. Wandering about, I tried to leave Pallet Town the usual way. Not that way. He couldn't go any further. I tried the homes. Screw them. I quirked my eyebrow at that, forgetting for a moment that this was not a real Pokemon game. The vulgarity just threw me off guard. I continued to look around, but there was nowhere I could go, until I accidentally stepped on the ocean. Steven walked right in. Only the upper half of his sprite visible. Like the swimmers you may encounter in Cerulean Gym. I didn't know he could swim. The missing one. The missing one? I paused for a moment. No, he couldn't possibly be. That. I hadn't tried the missing no trick on attack yet, but it just fit too well. That had to be what he meant. I surfed all the way towards Cinnabar. I began to feel something was off, more so than it already was. Silence. Lavender Town theme had stopped, and there was no noise at all. Nor were there any Pokemon. I kept going, finding Cinnabar and surfing up and down the east coast, and lo and behold, Wild Missing No appeared. Mine. Wild Missing No was caught. What the hell? Steven didn't even do anything. He just commanded that atrocity of broken data to join him. No, become his possession. And it did. I was getting more and more disturbed by this all. Checking the start menu, I saw missing nose not in the party, but instead an item, making things even stranger. I checked the trainer card as well. Steven has his back to me, his long hair draped behind him, and his hands in his pockets. Nothing else. Remembering what he said at the start of the night, I realized what I had to do. I surfed to land and made my way northeast to... Where else? Lavender Town. Along the way, I noticed all the trainers. They were oddly still out at this hour. They wouldn't even look at Steven, all of them turning as he passed. Even those who were normally static, I tried taking to one of those officer guard type buildings. Just go. They all said the same thing, though one sent chills down my spine. Sometimes, dead is best. My hands were sweating at this point. Steven, about to try the impossible, something someone would see as a crime against nature, which many of these people shared that opinion. I steeled myself. It's just a game. 
and I was going to complete it. It took an eternity to reach Pokemon Tower, but I still got there eventually. Taking a deep breath and heading toward the tombstone, I remembered which one. The image of Steven standing before it was burned into my mind after all. First, I tried inspecting it. Mickey. Nothing happened. With a gulp, I opened the menu and selected the missing note from the bag. Oak said, Steven, don't use it. I was reminded of Professor Oak. He would magically tell you you couldn't use a key item somewhere, like when using a bicycle in a building. Though the message of this time was different. It was even worse when Steven responded. In a world that cheated me. Why should I play fair? Steven used it. Steven obtained M. At number money sign. What? What in God's name did I obtain? I couldn't tell you because the game took away my control. Without my input, Steve began to leave the tower on his own. Walking, single, step by step. The Lavender Town theme started as he left the tower and began his excruciatingly slow journey against my will. Every time he crossed one of the borders, where the music would change, the music would just get progressively slower, more and more disturbing. By the time I reached Cerulean City, it was a demonic rumbling. I just started watching him, trying to guess where he was going, but I was getting more and more obvious. He was heading to Pallet Town. The music had all but stopped when I got there, playing a single note by single note. He went exactly where I guessed right into his own house, inside, and up the stairs. At this point there was no music. Steven moved step by step, stopping at his brother's bed, turning to face him. At first, at first, it was as if the game froze. He didn't do anything. He simply stood there, and I couldn't move him. I did, however, find out I could open the pause menu. I was terrified to look, but I couldn't stop myself. I selected his trainer card. There was a low growl noise and a distorted Pokemon cry. Steven was looking directly at me again, directly at the screen. He was hunched over, his bangs obscuring his face. His hair was all wild and feathered out. Between his bangs, there wasn't a face at all, just black, with two red eyes looking straight forward. A white grin contrasting with the darkness. That wasn't all. His name was now Steven, spelled S exclamation point three V three N. I couldn't look away. My eyes were glued to his, not breaking contact for some time. My vision was getting blurry until I couldn't see anything very well. My face grew wet. I was crying like a baby. There was nothing I could do but hold back the tears. I was with this boy from the start. I built him up to greatness. And then, I watched as his world was torn apart. I watched him go insane. Halting my tears, wiping my eyes. I closed out the trainer card and tried to save the game. I just wanted to quit. The game informed me that this was impossible. Nothing can be saved now. The pause menu wouldn't close no matter what I did. So with no other option, I checked the bag. Nothing happened. I checked Pokemon, and there was none. A single sprite met me. It had zero HP. Its status, dead. Its name, M, hat, number sign, money sign. I selected it and I was greeted with four options. It's her. Never. No. Strangle. My fingers shaking. I selected Strangle, and the menu closed, showing Steven in the room again. Goodbye. There was a big snap, and the game shut itself off. I was more dumbfounded than frightened. In a bit of a shock, I turned it back on. The title screen showing a maniac, Steven, and a horribly glitched Charizard. I press start and then continue, and I saw a zoomed out view of Pallet Town, showing Steven's home to the west, tall grass surrounding it, 
those unmovable stones blocking it from the rest of town. The image was completely static, no music, no movement, before fading to white, going to the black title screen. It was as it had been when it first popped in, a trainer in its Charizard, and I attempted to hit continue. No, 